Harry Carey back in the ballpark. Harry Carey back in the ballpark. The leadoff man, Hoskin Powell. The first pitch is a fastball low and outside. Powell leading off, hitting 243 for the year. <laughs> Playing left field. There's a fastball outside again. First pitch at 123. Rob Wilfong waiting on deck. He'll be playing second base. Now the pitch by Dennis Lamp. There's a fastball at the knee, a strike call. He played umpire as Ken Kaiser, George Maloney at first, Russ gets at second, Dallas Parks at first. Powell swings a bouncing ball. It, there's a pitcher covering close play, and they got him. Carlton Fist feeling that high hopper fed Dennis Lamp coming over to the bag for the out. Fist playing first base today. That's the first time this year. Earlier this season, he played in left field. There's the replay. And he gives him a good toss. And uh, what a close play there, Harry. Well, Powell really hustled down the line. One man out. And here's Rob Wilfong hitting 245. Very fast. I've always liked this guy. He's got a little bit of power. He's very fast. He's a good fielder. Can make the double play. He's got good range. Rob Wilfong. Dennis Lamp getting set. The pitch. Swings and he bounces it foul outside first base. Two strikes and nothing. Will Fong with three homers, 17 RBIs. There's a bouncing ball in fast. Bill Allman, the peg, going to be close. Oh, they got him on a close play. Fine play by Bill Allman, who fired over to Carlton Fisk. I would imagine, Lou, he watch this again. Well, Dennis Lamp has a good sinker ball, and because he forced him to reach for the ball, and one of the reasons why the big slow hopper, and it's really forcing the Sox to really make those plays in a hurry. I would imagine that this is uh, something you're going to see a lot of next year with Fisk giving way to Essien at times behind the plate and then playing first base. Here's the pitch down. It's Dave Engel playing right field. Came up originally as a third baseman. Swings at a breaking ball and he misses. Angle batting 257. He's had five homers, 30 runs batted in. Now the pitch by Dennis Lamp is a fastball at the knees, a strike call. Two strikes and the ball. Dave Engel, the hitter, two men are out, both on close play. Here's a bouncing ball, hit to the shortstop. There's Almond's peg in time, one, two, three. You can tell that Dennis Lamp is on his on his game today because the first three men all tap the ball into the ground, indicating his uh, sinker is really sinking. One, two, three, nothing across. We go to the bottom of the first, no score. of the first inning this copyright telecast presented by authority of the Chicago American League Baseball Club which has the right of approval of announcers and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience any publication reproduction retransmission or other use of the picture description on account of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago American League Baseball Club is prohibited well Dan Picara Picaro, great White Sox fan, executive at WGN. Nice message. I wish the year on Channel 9 would have been a victorious one, but maybe the Cubs have contaminated the airways down through the years. <laughs> <laughs> First pitch is high to Laviglio, ball one. Laviglio leading it off, hitting 250. There's a curveball a little bit outside. That was said most, most facetiously because the White Sox haven't exactly 
set the world on fire in the in recent years. Jay Lavigli, a very fast right-handed batter, and the fastball is high, ball three. Brad Havens has won three, lost six. The outfield around towards left. Tony Bernazard waiting on deck. There's a strike call. Harry, the kid Brad Havens out there was in the Rod Carew deal. Uh, he's a hard-throwing left-hander. In the minor leagues, he was known as the strikeout king. And since being at the big leagues, he has not found the control yet. And consequently, he feels his way through. But uh, he has won three games and lost six. And he didn't come up for the second half. Three balls, two strikes on Leviglio. Fouled at bat. Havens, a left-hander, comes right over the top. So the count is full. We have Laviglio at third base today, Fisk at first base. Here's a foul ball back into the upper deck. I got the net out today, but look at the big hole in this net. How we ever, the rats must have been at it. <laughs> the twine has been chewed away. Here's a pitch swan. High pop foul out of play. Herbeck is playing first base. Laudner is the catcher. Havens pitching. At second base, they have Will Fong. Washington's at short. And Hatcher at third. There's a pitch swung on. Fly ball, center field. Easy out. Gary Ward is there, and he takes it. So Laviglio, after running the count to three balls, no strikes, went to three and two and finally flied out. Well, of course, that was a high fastball just uh, around the strike zone, in letters, that is, and uh, the kid has a rising fastball, Havens does, and that's one of the reasons he got the big fly ball out to center field. So there's one away. And here's Tony Bernazard having a great season for the White Sox. The first pitch is a curveball. A little bit inside. Bernard, Bernazard batting 275, and he delivers another hit. In the month of September, he's hitting well over 330. Bernazard singles to center, and he's on there with one out. Now to bring up Chet Lemon, who has been red hot. Lemon hitting 303 leads a club. Nine homers, 50 runs batted in. Bernazard batting 296 right handed and 269 left handed. The little guy really's had a great season. And Harry is, he's only been hitting left handed for the last three years and. And of course, hitting around 269 to 270 left handed is quite an achievement just to have just started to switch, switch hitting. Here's Lemon. He hit his ninth home run of the year last night, hitting 303. Note on Bernard, this is the sixth consecutive game that he has reached base in his first time up. The sixth straight game that Bernard has reached base his first time at bat. Boston. At Cleveland, California, Texas, New York, and Baltimore. Oakland and Kansas City tonight. A lot of magic numbers at one, including St. Louis at Pittsburgh and Montreal and New York. Montreal conclusion with a victory or a cardinal loss. Here's a ball bunted down the third base line, but it goes foul. A good idea by Lemon, but the ball trickled foul. He could have walked to first base had he been able to get the ball down. It was interesting that he would try out Hatcher at, Hatcher at third base because it's a sort of an unusual position for him, and Lemon took the chance. He dropped and dead the ball very good, but just foul, and Harry, there was no chance at all for anybody to be thrown out at either base. So Lemon looking at Bobby Winkles now. Pitch out not going anywhere.
Two balls and a strike. That was the action pitch for one one count. You got a young left hander out there and certainly they thought that the Sox would be in a hit and run position in which they were not. So he's got ball two rather than. Now a curveball makes a ball three rather than Haven going for the strike. So in other words the Sox come out ahead on that pitch Harry because now he missed with the curveball. Now you got a three one count which almost indicates an action pitch here. All right Brad Havens is ready three balls and a strike the delivery. Ball four is high and Lemon is on there. Brad Havens is one three lost six. Final game of the year here tomorrow we're going to be out in the center field bleachers with all this stuff going on. It certainly will be the final broadcast of this season at any rate. And who knows maybe the last one. So I'd sure I'd like to see a lot of our friends come out in the bleachers with me on the last day of the year tomorrow afternoon a 115 ball game. Greg Lozinski the batter hitting 267 20 homers and 60 RBIs. Runners at first and second a pitch way high. That evens a count a ball and a strike Lozinski in the cleanup spot. Brad Havens works quickly. The young left hander delivers fouled out of play into the upper deck on the first base side. The pitch on the way high pop fly on the infield should be easy. Rob Wilfong is there. The infield fly rules in effect anyway. And Lazinski has popped out. That's two away, brings up Wayne Nordhagen. Harry, that was a good pitch from Haven. Uh, he threw a fastball, got to Lazinski to foul it off, came back in the middle of the plate with a changeup. Greg was out in front of that ball just a bit, which caused the pop up. So it was a major league pitch. And I hate to use the term major league pitch, but in that situation, he had to make that pitch, and he did. All right, here now is Wayne Art Hagen batting 312 for the year with six homers. He swings a little bouncing ball foul down the third base line. One strike and nothing. Nart Hagen has appeared in 90 games, been to bat 290 times. No, 199 times, 63 games. So he's played a little more than half the year. Six homers, 31 runs batted in. Nard Hagen digs in. Here's the pitch on the way. Fastball a little bit low. This kid Havens comes right over the top and throws hard. A ball and a strike. Here's the pitch. Into the dirt. Good save by Laudner, the catcher, who's a big guy. Laudner went to Mizzou, Harry, and the fact is we played against him in his last year in college. And, and of course, the first three hitters got on base, and he looked at Ted Simmons and said, hey, we came to beat you guys, and they almost did. <laughs> Here's the pitch swung, and he fouled it back. In other words, he's a competitive young man. Yeah, we wound up winning the ball game 5-3, but it gave them a great deal of hope and credibility by scoring three runs and holding us to only five. And when you think about a college ball club playing against a big league team. Two balls, two strikes. Now the pitch, here it is. And it's high, took something off. Ball three. Three balls, two strikes. Wayne Arthagen, the runners will be going with the pitch. Now from the belt to pitch they go the runner swung his line drive left field base hit one run will score there's another man going to third and he is out the run will count 
because Bernazard had crossed the plate before Lemon was thrown out from Powell, the hatcher. <laughs> Lemon was thrown out last night, too, so that's sort of an encore of the same act. But Nornhagen rips a single to left. Now watch this throw. Instead, they pick up the runner coming across the back. The plate. And it is one run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of one, White Sox taking the lead over Minnesota, one to nothing. Harry Carey and Lou Brock, we go to the top of the second, and Dennis Lamp now is out in front, one to nothing. Let's watch that play where Chet Lemon is thrown out again on the replay. The ball almost skips by Hoskin Powell. That's probably why he didn't even know he had it. Now here's the throw, and it's a good one. Harry, I was going to say this kid made the play himself, and Chet Lemon did what he had to do on a hit and run. With two outs, you got to go for third base, and he just happened, uh, Powell, that is, make a strong throw to third base. He's a left-handed throw. There goes Chet Lemon. Trotting out to center field now. We have Essien catching today, Lamp pitching. Lamp with a 2.29 earn run average. He's won seven, he's lost six. He's pitched consistently good. Allman is the shortstop, Bernazard at second, Fisk at first. The third baseman is Laviglio. Kuntz is in right field. Lemon in center. And Nard Hagen in left. Here's Lamp getting ready now. Tim Cochran, left handed batter. The DH today, the pitch is a fastball outside and high. That's the first pitch he's gotten above the knees. Mickey Hatcher on deck. There's a strike call. Now the pitch. Fastball over the outside corner is strike call. Dennis Lamp has pitched one hitters in each league. He had a one hitter pitching for the Cubs at, against San Diego. Earlier in this year, he one hitted the Milwaukee Brewers. Here's strike three to Cochran call. Tim Cochran called out on strikes. That brings up Mickey Hatcher, the third baseman hitting 253. Three homers and 36 runs batted in. Here's the pitch to Hatcher, and it's a strike call to beauty. Dennis Lamp, very, very sharp. Now the signal given, the delivery, here it is. Breaking ball a little bit outside. One away, Hatcher used to be in the Dodger organization also. Now the pitch. Swung at a high pop fly. Now the third baseman, Laviglio, drops the ball! From there, Laviglio. Charge with an error that. Well, he had a tough play. He was looking into the sun, and one of the reasons he does, he does call for this ball. Carlton Fisk is, you know, he's playing first base. The third baseman is a take charge individual on the field, and you can see him over the first base side, and he really was taking charge, but he was fighting the sun at the same time. And I, again, Harry, I believe the reason was that he's going to take charge and, and, and allow that catch without having Carlton Fisk to make that decision. All right, a runner at first base now. One out. Here's Gary Ward hitting 266 for the year. He impresses me as the very best hitter in their lineup. Ward with three homers, 25 runs batted in. Hatcher, an aggressive base runner at first base with one out. Now Dennis Lamp from the belt to pitch. Curveball in there, a beauty, a strike call. One strike and nothing. Now the sign. 
A lead by Hatcher. The pitch. Bouncing ball might be a double play to Bernazard. Over to Allman for one. Over to Fires for two. Four, six, three, and out. And it's no runs, no hits, one air, nobody left. We go on to the bottom of the second, and Lamp has faced only six men for two innings, which is perfection. We go on to the bottom of the second, the White Sox lead one to nothing. back at Comiskey Park as we go on the bottom of the second inning. We're just looking out into the center field bleacher. Well, I hope more of you come out tomorrow when we'll be broadcasting from there. We counted 15 people in the center field bleachers today, not counting the two security men and the WGN cameraman. Who's our cameraman out there? Lowell Raymond. Are you lonesome out there, Lowell? <laughs> Well, if so, this bud's for you. <laughs> there, I wasn't kidding about the 15 count. Here we go with Colin Fisk leading it off. Friends, you can get the jump on White Sox tickets for next year. You can call or write for season ticket information now at 924-1000. Or if you want to write, address the Chicago White Sox. 324 West 35th Street, Chicago. The zip code is 60616, and a season ticket representative will be happy to give you all the necessary information. Carlton Fist, the batter, takes high, ball three. Get well wishes to Don Harvey at Holy Cross Hospital, and also to Donna Slowick. Fisk batting 261, the pitch. Ball four, he walked him. Brad Havens is only 21 years old. 6'1", 180. He started in professional baseball in 1978. Boy, oh boy, he was only 18 years old when he broke in with the Quad Cities, where he won 13 and lost 10 and had 197 strikeouts in 200 innings. Then the following year, he went to Orlando. There goes a the runner. The pitch swung on. A hit and run was on. But Essien lifts a high pop foul. And the first baseman is there, Ken Herbeck, to make the play. Essien with a hit and run on foul to Herbeck. One out. That'll bring up Rusty Koontz, the right fielder. Harry Carlton Fisk got confused a little bit out there because Will Fong gave him the the good fake at second base as though the ball was on the ground, but he did a smart thing. Rather than to stand and look at Will Fong, he looked at third base coach Wickles and certainly got back to first base as quick as possible. Just looking at Havens, last year he pitched in the California League where he struck out 179. So you've got to consider him a pretty good prospect. The pitch. Curveball is in there, a strike call. He is won't be 22 years old until November the 17th. Now to stretch the left-hander's pitch. Here it is. Fastball, strike called. Rusty Coons batting 264. Final game of the season tomorrow afternoon. Now from the belt, the pitch. Curve low and inside. Two strikes and the ball. Oakland at Kansas City play tonight. They're sure to start the playoffs. Tuesday in Kansas City. One on, one out. There's a throw over to first, the runner back. The Cardinals have certainly run into the what has been their bugaboo in recent years, lack of pitching. There's a pitch, double play, ball hit to the second baseman. Out at second, out at first. Allman rolled, Coons rather rolled into a double play. Four, six, three. And it's no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left at the end of two. The good guys won Minnesota nothing. Hapless boy leading it off. First pitch by Dennis Lamp is a fastball sinking low and away. Herbeck with one home run this season. That was at Yankee Stadium and it won a ball game. 
He's a rookie, just 21 years old, from Minneapolis. Here's the pitch a little bit low, ball two. Uh, Herbeck certainly hurt us the last time we were in Minneapolis. Yeah. Uh, he kept swinging a hot bat. There is another line drive for Herbeck. A base hit in the center field. Remember that when Minnesota scored four in the bottom of the ninth to beat the White Sox and complete the three-game sweep, it was Herbeck who came off the bench and got the game-winning hit with two out. Now he starts it off with a line single to center. That'll bring up Tim Laudner, the catcher. Laudner batting 200. Two homers, four runs batted in. Hard to believe, isn't it, that this club would be ahead of the White Sox in the standing? But they are, and they're sure to stay there. Because they they lead the White Sox by three games, and there's only two left, including today. Minnesota demonstrated that they have some scrappers on the ball club. You look at second base, Will Fung, and as well as Castino at third base. Pretty here's, good scrappers. Here's the easy pop fly to center field. Lemon is there. You see where Castino had a operation uh, yesterday, a spinal fusion. They say he definitely will not play next year and maybe never. Isn't that a just a crime? What a tragedy. Such a fine young ball player with his career all ahead of him. That's why I don't be too tough on ball players when you read about them holding out or negotiating because their career is a short one. And nobody knows when injury will interrupt it for good. Here is Rob Washington, the shortstop, the pitch. And he swings at a breaking ball and he misses. Ron Washington hitting 211. No homers, four runs batted in. Ken Kaiser, the plate umpire. Now the stretch. The pitch on the way, here it is. Swung smash right, whoa, past Laviglio. There's Allman recovering, throwing the first too late. It'll be a base hit, I'm sure. A hot shot off Laviglio's glove. Let's take another look at this. This is that uh, uh, slide in the middle of the plate. Here's a smash right at uh, Laviglio. The ball took a big hop, and that's one of the reasons it hit off the end of his glove. He was playing it perfectly. And it just took that big hop off the end of his glove. And as you can see, Auburn trying to make the throw with a fast guy like Washington. That's no chance at first. Here's Hoskin Powell, and he swings, and he missed the first bit. Powell tapped out to Fisk with a pitcher covering to start the ball game. Runners at first and second, one out. One to nothing in favor of the White Sox. Top of the third. The pitch to Hoskin Powell. Swings at a terrible pitch, low and outside. And he barely took the ball foul. Powell has two homers, 25 RBI. You know, you go through their starting lineup. Here's a stretch, the pitch way outside. They only have one man who's hit more than three home runs, and that's Dave Engel, a rookie, who has hit five. And Engel has only played. 80 game. There's a double play ball. Bernazard to Allman for one over the first. He saves. The ball gets away from Fisk and the run's going to score. They, the umpire had started to call him out and the ball popped out of Fisk's hands. So the game is tied up and is not a double play, merely a force play. And Herbeck will score all the way. Harry, let's take a look at this. One of the reasons this happens. If you watch Bonizard, he gives the ball to Almond at short stop. And if you watch Washington, he doesn't slide right away. He's still up, which forces the throw into his body. Now, Carlton won't have a chance to see that ball all the way. And he only picks it up by halfway, and that's why that ball sort of uh, really tied him up at first base. Hey, have they got... Uh, don't tell me they gave an air to... Uh, Lavigli on that other play, they got three airs up. There's a pitch a little bit uh, high. Will Fong, the batter, 1-1 one, one tie, I guess they did. We have a hit by Herb Herbeck. Okay. Wait, where's the third air? I can't figure this out. Now the stretch. 
Here's the pitch. Strike over the outside corner. the second hit. Well, they only got one hit. They gave a Vigley on air on that ball by Washington. Well, that's a tough air to get. It's a hot shot off his glove. Pitch out, nobody going anywhere. Hoskins Powell, safe at first. Well, they almost had the double play had the ball not oozed out of Fisk's glove. But the run scores, makes it an unearned run. Hoskin Powell, the runner at first, two out. Rob Wilfong, the hitter. Now Dennis Lamp is ready. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside, ball three. And Dave Engel coming up next. Three balls and a strike. Andy the Clown can be heard and as he parades through the stands. Here's the pitch. Ball four. He walked it. The Viglios made two errors, one of them a very excusable one. Carlton Fisk was charged with one on the throw that he couldn't hold. And the totals for the White Sox read from left to right as follows. One, two, three. <laughs> one run, two hits, three errors. Big championship fights. Out at the horizon in Rosemont tonight. Quick Tillis will try to whip Mike Weaver for the heavyweight title, the World Boxing Association version. Here's Engel to pitch low and outside. And marvelous Marvin Hagler defends his middleweight title on the same card. Now the pitch, here it is. Started a swing, did he hold up in time? He did. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes, runners at first and second. The game tied up 1-1. Dave Engel, who bounced out to short his first time. Now the stretch, the delivery, here it is. Curve ball in there, a beauty, a strike call. Detroit is underway at Milwaukee, no score in the first inning. Hoskin Powell playing it safe at second. Likewise, Will Fong at first. Now the pitch to Engel. Swung and he missed. And the count is evened up at two balls, two strikes. Engel looks like strictly a fastball hitter. He looks like the curveball he went hit with a paddle. Well, of course, he's sitting on the, on the fastball. Uh, he hurt the Sox in Minneapolis on the fastball. and Just struck him out on a curveball again. And he threw him nothing but curveball after that. So Engel goes down swinging. One run. Only one hit, two errors, two left. We go to the bottom of the third, tied up one, one. This is a curveball in there for a strike call. Notre Dame leads Michigan State 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Now the wind up the pit and the curve is in there for a strike call. Indiana out in front of Michigan. Seven to nothing. The middle of first period. George Foster hit his 22nd with two on for Cincinnati. Now the sign. There's a pitch. Did he foul tip or not? This is WGM Television 9, Chicago. America's number one sports station. Cincinnati leading Atlanta 3-1 to one in the second inning on George Foster's 22nd home run. Here's the pitch swung and missed, and Bill Allman goes down swinging. One away. Cardinals now lead at Pittsburgh four to nothing. There's a pitch foul back. Montreal's going to have to lose two, and the Cardinals are going to have to win two for the Cardinals to win that thing. So Montreal's number, magic number is one. 
Here's the pitch now to Laviglio, and it's a little bit inside. Now the pitch, here it is. He bunts towards the second baseman. Wolfong in fast. Can't make a play. Base hit. Laviglio pushed the bunt towards the second baseman and beat it out as Wolfong could not make the barehanded pickup. Let's take another look at this. Yeah, as you can see, Haven falling off to third base, and Wilfong had, a, had enough time to pick this ball off the glove. He did not realize it, and of course, he went for it barehanded. And that's why he missed this ball, but he had a lot of time. That ball was bunted pretty hard. So here is Tony Bernazar now. Now the throw of the first. The runner back. There's the stretch. The pitch. The ball bunted foul down the third baseline. Yale is leading Navy in college football. 16 to 12 at the end of the three periods. Designers are the sixth finalist are here today. And the the fans selected uniform number two designed by Richard Launius of Dayton, Ohio. Uniform number one was designed by Bruce Johnson of Chicago. The winning design number two by Richard Launius of Dayton, Ohio. There's the throw to first. Number three uniform was designed by Scott Barrow from Dallas, Texas. The number four uniform was Edward Soupe of Chicago. The number five was by Michael Lewis of Chicago. There's a runner picked off first base trying to go to second. He is cut down from Havens to Herbeck to Washington. One, three, six. And uniform number six was designed by William Clages, K-L-A-G-E-S of Chicago. With the help of the White Sox accounting firm Ernst & Winnie, the official winner of the uniform campaign was uniform number two designed by Richard Launius of Dayton, Ohio. Eddie Einhorn, president of the White Sox, presented a copy of the uniform as modeled during the weeks of voting to each finalist designer as a memento of the uniform campaign. Here's a ground ball hit by Bernazard right to the first baseman, Rubik. Fields and steps on the bag, easy out to retire the side. No runs. One hit, no errors. Nobody left. This is Harry Carey moving over to the radio. The score at the end of three tied up one and one. Everybody, Joe McConnell along with Lou Brock on a sunny but chilly day here at Comiskey Park as we move into the fourth inning. There's a look at the line score. A 1-1 tie, but the big number on there is the three errors against the White Sox. And so far, Lou, the experiment trying Carlton Fisk at first base has not paid off. Well, of course, he had a very tough play the very, on, the, on the double play simply because Washington, the runner, stood up a long time before he started to slide. And because of that, Carlton lost sight of the ball and the ball sort of handcuffed him at first base. All right, we move to the top of the fourth inning. For the Twins, the first pitch outside the ball, it's Timmy Corcoran leading it off. The run against Denny Lamp is unearned. Ball two. There's a base hit right center field past Tony Bernazard. That's hit number two for the Twins. And as they did in the third inning, they get the leadoff man on with a base hit. Corcoran had struck out the first time, Lou. Yeah, Corcoran had uh, struck out on ball up. 
One of the few times that Dennis Lamp did get the ball up, that time he was up there watching the ball all the way, and he got a pitch up that he could handle, and he slammed it in center field for base hit. One on, nobody out. Here's Mickey Hatcher, former Dodger. Came over to the Twins in the Kenny Landro trade. There's the knee-high strike. Hatcher still trying to find a position. He has played a lot at center field this year. They had him at first base last night. He's back at the hot corner at third today, and that was the position he, he had coming up in the Dodger organization. There was a lot of talk that he might replace Ronnie Say. Pitch inside a ball, one and one. Well, Ron Say is probably the last uh, Dodger third baseman to come up and stay a long time. As you know, Garvey was there and quite a few other names in the at least 70 other players that tried third base before Ron Say. Ball two, just off the corner. And Hatcher was another name thrown in there. Well, they've tried to retire Say for about five years, and each year he comes back and hits his usual 15 homers, drives in about 80 runs. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But here's a guy who can play a lot of positions. Uh, first base, third base, all the position in the outfield. I would imagine the only position he has not tried has been behind the plate. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. There's that sinker hit hard on the ground. It runs right up Allman's arm and drops right in front of him. Boy, the White Sox are having all kinds of trouble today. That ball was hit sharply, and Allman had to reach down backhanded, and the ball hit the heel of his glove and ran right up his arm. Sure on this play, he had a lot more time he thought he did. He got to the ball very quickly, and he reached down for the backhanded throw, and I thought he was trying to come up and throw at the same time. He had a lot more time than he thought he had. Well, they're going to give Hatcher a hit there. When that ball bounces above your head and you've got to look for it, there's an empty feeling out there. You have no idea where the ball is. Nobody can yell says above you. <laughs> you have to wait until the ball fall, as you saw, you saw Bill go spinning around trying to find the ball. So the Twins have runners at first and second. Nobody out. Here's Gary Ward. One hopper right back to the mound. Lamp goes to third for one. Across the diamond, they get the double play. Lamp was a bit indecisive at first. He didn't know whether to go to third or to second, and that cost him some valuable time, but they still managed to pull off the 1-5-3 double play, and there's a runner at second. That's the hard way. I, it very rarely do you see a double play made in that fashion. You get the lead rod after Lamp could not decide where to throw the ball. He suddenly decided to chop down the lead rod, and Laviglio did a great thing that at the time he did not think he just whirling through the first base in time to get a guy like Ward. So there are two out. Ward now is hitting the two double plays. Low and away. Ball one to Herbick who singled and scored in that third inning. 